Welcome to another inspirational teaching from Tim Warden Communications. Our mission is to honor God and deliver all his benefits. I wish you a Merry Christmas. M A R Y. Merry Christmas. Paki sabi Merry Christmas. Kaya Merry Christmas because yung nangyari kay Mary, yung himala na nangyari inside of Mary is the same miracle that can happen inside of your life. Kumbaga, yung nangyari kay Mary is a pattern for us to follow. A pattern of what would happen to us. Una, si Mary na buntis. Yung buhay ng Diyos mismo ang napasa kanya. So inside of her, Jesus was born. And it was something na choice niya, dinisay niya. Sabi niya, I am the Lord's servant. Be it unto me according to your word. So, Mary received Christ. Mary accepted that Jesus would come in to live inside of her, would be born in her. And yun din ang mangyayari sa atin. When you believe the word of the Lord, you believe that God loves you, He wants to save you, He wants to change your life, so tatanggapin mo si Jesus to get inside of you. You know, pinaka exciting na mangyayari sa buhay mo. Not that you have a promotion at work. Not that nakapagpatayo ka ng bahay or business. But that God would move in to your life. Hindi bilang tourist. Hindi bilang bisita, visitor one. But to become a permanent resident in your heart. To live with you forever. To be with you. That's heaven on earth. <laughs> That's the best. And so, Mary received Christ in her. You receive Christ in you. And then, nung siyempre, na kineri niya, there's a process of when a woman becomes pregnant, nine months of growing in the womb. The Christ grew in her, developed, nag-form si Jesus inside of her womb. It's the same thing sa atin. Nang tinanggap mo si Jesus, a process starts in you. Of course, it's not instant. But over time, Jesus starts growing in you. Yung ugali ni Jesus nag-form inside of your character. Nagbabago na ang pag-iisip mo. Your values start changing. It, it changes the way you think. Yung mga habits mo and your priorities. And somehow, ang ugali ni Jesus, ang gusto niya, nagiging gusto mo rin. Yung ayaw ni Jesus, nagiging ayaw mo rin. Yung appetites ng Diyos, napapasayo. It changes what you love. Your life will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And yun ang nangyari when Christ is formed in you. And that's what we call discipleship. The word disciple means a follower. You know, you become like the one you're following. And when you become Disciplo ni Cristo, nagiging katulad niya. Your life starts changing. Because why? Christ is being formed in your character. And then, siyempre, after nine months, Mary gave birth to the Christ. Yung Savior of the world came out of Mary to save the world. So, lumabas si Jesus sa tiyan ni Maria and, and she became the one to deliver the Savior to the world. Ganon din ang mangyari sa atin. That the time comes when God will use you. And the flow of Jesus will come out of your conversations, out of your service, out of your kindness. Lalabas sa pagbibigay mo. And out of your life will flow a Savior. Ma, you will deliver kaligtasan sa tahanan mo. People in your office, people in your barangay will be reached and touched and changed by the flow of Jesus through you. Hindi lang through the church, hindi lang through a pastor. Sa buhay mo, lalabas ang voice ni God, ang message ng Diyos. The kindness, the character of Christ will flow through you. That's amazing. Sino ba ako? But the life of God will come through me. Because He came to me. This is what life is all about. You becoming a vessel, a container of Jesus. Christ in you. 
Nakikipark participates sa glory niya. He comes in you, grows in you, you develop, you change, and you flow. You deliver all His benefits. Yun po ang Merry Christmas. Kaya I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish yung nangyari kay Mary, mangyayari din sa'yo. Christ will be born in you. His character formed in you. And His life flow out of you to others in your world. And today I want to just share with you about God's great gift exchange. Sino sa inyo sa Pasko, may party sa office o sa school na mayroong gift exchange? Taas ang kamay, sinong inaasahan na may magre-regalo sa'yo this Christmas? Sino sa inyo may balak na magregalo sa iba? Buti na lang, at least 50-50. Yeah? Pag inaasahan mo, sana may balak ka rin magbigay. Ayun. Nung bata ako, pinaka-exciting time of the year ang Pasko. E eh, November pa lang, excited na kami makatanggap ng regalo. May awit na, He knows if you've been good or bad. Alam mo yan? So, Siyempre, bumabait kami around November, early part ng December. Nagiging mabait na. Yeah, opo, opo, man ganun. Gusto kong katanggap ng regalo. Meron akong uh, toy, laruan na gusto kong akuin. My trip noon, I was collecting posters ng mga sports idol ko. I like to have posters and toys. And then, may time I remember that year, gustong gusto ko makatanggap ng tuta. Wala kaming pet. Gusto ko talaga na tuta. And uh, my dream came true. I had a pet dog. So, we like to have gift exchange. And sa parties na mga schools or, or offices, there's also this gift exchange. You know, bunutan. And you will get a name. And then, you buy a gift for that person. Wouldn't it be nice if ang kagif exchange mo ay mayaman? Oh, di ba? Mayaman. <laughs> Kasi usually sa mga gift exchange, mayroong sinaset ng floor price. A minimum. At least when you buy a gift for that party, dapat hindi bababa sa floor price na yan. Maybe 150 350 Pag bumaba ang dala mong gift, it's baba sa floor price. Ang tawag sa'yo, kuriput. Di ba? Pag lampas ng floor price at malaki ang ginastos mo, galante. And of course, you want na galante yung ka-exchange mo. But you always would bring one and pag may dala, pwedeng iuwi ng gift. Pag ang dala mo ay hindi ganong ka-mahal, Pero ang iwi mo, mas mahal kaysa yung dinala mo, ibig sabihin, sulit, swerte, di ba? Pag yung dala mo ay mahalaga at yung inuwi mo, mas pangit kaysa yung dala mo, lugi. And my favorite gift exchange is yung mga tinatawag na white elephant gift exchange. Kasi una, ang white elephant, yan yung walang silbing bagay, pero may silbi sa iba. Yung inaari mo, hindi siya bago. Pwedeng bago, pwedeng hindi brand new. Pero yung something na meron ka ngayon, you don't have to buy a new one. Tingin-tingin lang ka sa bahay kung ano mga gamit na walang silbi sa'yo. Pero baka may silbi sa iba. Magugustuhan nila. So white elephant gift exchanges, you bring something from your house that you don't need. You don't want it. You're trying to get rid of it. Hindi mo kailangan. And you want to throw it away or I see in bis na itapon ko, yan ang ibibigay ko sa gift exchange. And then somebody else will bring something na hindi, nika, hindi nila kailangan. And hopefully, sa games na yan is may mga palitan after nabuksan na yung gift, pwedeng swap or steal. May mga iba bang rules you can change. Have you tried that game? Asaya. Asaya. But the point there is you give your junk. Diba? One man's trash is another man's treasure. So you give your junk, but someone else wants that. They like that. You know, maybe yung sapatos medyo masikip sa'yo, but exacto fit sa iba. And you hope that you will take home something na much more valuable than what you brought. Okay? Why did I talk about this white elephant gift exchange? Because God wants to exchange gifts with you this Christmas. God wants to give you a gift and he was willing to take away from you 
the white elephant na hindi mo kailangan, na hindi na bagay sa iyo. And there's a lot of things in our lives that we don't want. There's a lot of things in our past, in our character that we just don't like about ourselves. Kumaari lang, I want to throw away and change with a better habit, a better mentality. And dami nating white elephant kaya. And dami natin, natin dapat may flush out, may tapon. Buti na lang nakikipag-gift exchange ang Diyos sa atin. And you know, Jesus has already bought a gift for you. He's already purchased that. Hindi peso, hindi dollar ang gamit niya. Dugo niya. Nang si Jesus may pako sa cross, He purchased sa gamit ng kanyang dugo a gift for you. And have you ever given someone or you bought someone a gift, ginifrap mo, and then excited ka magbigay because alam mo, mahalaga yung gift at gustong gusto nila, kailangan pa nila, and you are so excited to give it sa kanila, ang excitement mo na magbigay, mas mataas kaysa yung excitement nila na tumanggap. Why? Because maybe hindi nila alam kung gaano kahalaga yung ibinigay mo sa kanila. And that's how Jesus feels about it. Listen, ever since before you were born, 2,000 years ago, Jesus bought a gift for you. And He's so excited na mapasayo ang binili niya with His blood, the gift. Mas excited siya na magbigay ng gift niya sa'yo kaysa sa'yo na you are not so always excited to receive it. Because maybe you don't know. Maybe hindi ka pa fully aware just kung gaano kahalaga ang gift na binili niya sa'yo. Maybe you still don't know. Oh, wala lang. Okay, religion. Okay, Jesus. Yeah, whatever. You know, pa easy, easy. Pwedeng, sige, I believe in God. Wala. Pero hindi mo talagang nag-gets kung gano'ng katindi ang gift ng binigyan niya sa'yo. And so he is excited. He's waiting for you to receive. He's just excited. I can't wait until you and me get together. You open your heart. You Invite me to come in and be born in you at mapapa sayo ng gift na kakaiba will change your life. You need this gift. Magugustohan mo ito. I tell you, Jesus is very excited. Sana itong Christmas na. Ito na. You know, John 3.16. Kabisado natin to. For God loved the world. Kasama ka doon. He loved the world so much that, here's the key word, He gave. He gave His one and only Son that whoever would just believe in that gift ay hindi mapahamak kundi magkaroon ng eternal life. Kaya sabi ko eternal life kasi hindi lang siya sa haba ng buhay. Sa Tagalog kasi buhay na walang hanggan. But the real meaning of eternal life is not number of years, yung haba, or yung duration, or quantity. Eternal life is talking about quality, not quantity of living. Eternal life is the good life, the abundant life. And the gift ng binigay ng Diyos sa atin, letter A, is a gift that keeps on giving. Nananatili, parang tuloy-tuloy. May another level, may another unwrapping, may another unfolding, may another increasing pakinabang, biyaya, tuloy-tuloy. It's a gift na walang ending. Have you seen yung Russian doll? A Russian doll is yung kahoy na parang container ang shape niya parang pabilog na oval tapos painted doon is a doll. This was popularized by the Russians noon. Pag binuksan mo yung half, yung kalahati, i-open mo, merong nakakambal niya na mas maliit na konti sa loob. So binuksan mo, kunin mo yung mas maliit, ibalik mo. So may, may dalawa na. Pag binuksan mo yung mas maliit na paliit na paliit, kamukha lahat ng mga Russian dolls o may mga ibabang dress. And so yung gift, which starts out big, 
sa loob doon, mayroong mas maliit and then paliit na paliit. It reminds me doon sa aking pinsan, may, may cousin ako na mahilig mang asar kasi December 25 sa amin, sa bahay ng lola ko, and doon na lahat ng mga regalo sa ilalim ng Christmas tree. And on 25 ng hapon, we have this gift opening. Lahat ng mga gifts and doon. And then yung pinsan ko, meron siyang hinanda na regalo sa akin na napakalaki. Ang ganda ng gift wrap na akala mo hindi self-gift wrap, kundi yung parang itsura na galing sa company, galing sa mall ang pag-gift wrap, professional. And it's overwhelming kasi sa lahat ng mga regalo doon, may mga maliliit, may mga medium, alam mo yung balot na parang sloppy. Ito, ganda. And then, to Tim from Brad. So grabe. I was so excited to see my gift. And imagine, from early part of December, excited na ako malaman kung anong regalo. Bicycle ba? Ano bang mga toys dyan? Baka napakalaking truck. Or kung anong mga, siyempre torture sa bata na the, the suspense, the anticipation, you know, the looking forward. Parang, Anong yun? Ano yun? Ay, secret. Ang torture niya. Gusto ko sana i-shake para malaman ko may hint or what. No hints. Kasi hindi ko ma-shake eh. Masyadong mabigat. Napakal. It's the biggest one. Pagdating sa December 25, okay, hataw na. Time to open. So binuksan ko yung gift, yung gift wrap. Nung binuksan ko yung box, meron andyan na yung, yung pinaka box na mas maliit sa loob. Binuksan ko yung box na yan. Gift wrap din. Pero ang daming scotch tape. Ang hirap i-open eh. Takes time. So, binuksan ko pa yung box sa loob. Akala ko yun na yun. Pero yung sa loob doon, mga bato. Kasama ng ibang box na mas maliit. So, binuksan ko yung mas maliit na box. Sa loob doon, mas maliit na box na naman. Na naka-duct tape. Yung duct tape, yung talagang ang hirap na buksan. So, pinapahirapan niya ako. And then nung finally, binuksan ko yung box na mas maliit. Meron na naman na mas maliit na box. So paliit na paliit. Tapos yung gift wrap, papangit na papangit na papangit. May mga bato, may mga dead weight, sa so something na pabigat lang. Until such time, yung pinaka-gift, and nakalimutan ko kung ano kasi hindi, hindi remarkable yung gift na binigay. Napakaliit. Uh, toy car na plastic or what. No? Parang napaka Kalokohan talaga, mga kakaasar, no? But that's the gift that you got. It starts out big and beautiful and awesome and then... <laughs> Listen, the gift that God gave you is the opposite. It starts out not impressive. It starts out something small. You know, it's not so incredible or fantastic, but it's, it's a gift that starts out small. And then it keeps getting bigger and better and more real and more applicable and more tangible and more relevant and palaki na palaki na paganda na paganda na paganda. And it's like this. Maybe it started out na isang pangako ng Diyos, isang Bible verse lang. Maybe it's yung gospel was not so impressive. What? John 3.16? Alam ko na yan. Wala yan. Yan lang. Yan lang ay bigay mo. Wala yan. Pero pag tinanggap mo yung simple gospel message, yung katotohanan na God loves you, Jesus paid all of your debts, past, present, and future. But I'm still hungry. I'm still jobless. I'm still sick. I still have a bad attitude. May addiction pa ako. Yun lang bibigay mo sa akin. I don't need religion. I need money. I don't need a Bible verse. I need a husband. <laughs> I need a job. <laughs> I need healing. So listen. It starts out maybe small and small, but it gets bigger and better and better and better. That's why Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, Grow in it. Grow. It's growing. It's increasing. Grow in the grace. Grace is another word for gift. 
grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace because yung gift just keeps getting better and better. And grow in the knowledge because you keep discovering. As you know more, madi discover mo, more intimately, more personally, meron pala another level. Meron pala another benefit. Maliban pa sa akala ko si Jesus, ganito lang, religion, go to church, become a good person. Hindi, hindi yun ang ending. It keeps getting more exciting, more pleasurable, more relevant, more life-changing. And let her be that the gift that Jesus bought you is an all-in package. All-inclusive. Hindi lang yung ticket that will get you into the gate of heaven. Nung tinanggap ko si Jesus, nung 15 years old ako, yun lang ang habol ko. Basta, ayaw kong may tapon sa impyerno. I don't want to go to hell. I just want kahit pinakalikod. Basta, nakakapasok ako sa langit. I want makapasok ako kahit doon lang sa gilid, doon lang sa gate. Kahit sa labas lang, basta ayaw kong pumunta sa impyerno, sa heaven lang ako. Yun lang ang habol ko noon. Kaya tinanggap ko si Jesus. Hindi ko akalain that yung sa pagtanggap ko kay Jesus, when I received Jesus into my life, hindi ko akalain it was a full, complete package deal. It was not just a ticket to get in the door. John 17 verse 3 says that this is eternal life. Diba? Hindi mapahama kundi makaroon ng buhay na walang hanggang. And Jesus defined kung anong ibig sabihin na eternal life. He says, this is eternal life. That men can know you. Circle that. Know you. Can know you. The privilege to get to know God intimately, personally. That's eternal life. That people can know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. And many people, many Christians, naniniwala talaga sa John 3.16. Okay, whoever believes in him, ay hindi mapahamag. And yet, they still, they receive Christ, but still live their life without having the personal, intimate relationship with God. That you know him personally. They think, akala mga tao is that this benefit of becoming a born-again believer Kala nila, yung benefits that will really mean something, those are all reserved for the future. Pag patay na ako, saka lang ako makakaroon ng salvation, healing, wala ng problema. I have a harp and I can live on the clouds and play music and be happy already. Kakaboring yan. Sa totoo lang, kakaboring yan. Kung yun lang ang pakinabang to become a Christian, huwag na. Listen. The benefits starts now. You don't have to live your life carrying guilt. You don't have to live your life wearing shame. You don't have to walk through life in fear because the gift will drive out fear. You don't have to be worried every day, full of stress. You don't have to live a weak life, sickly, Defeated, a victim, lagi. Hindi mo kailangan maging stuck up lagi sa ganitong level, sa ganitong status. You don't have to be addicted to whatever. You don't have to live your life na powerless to change. There's power for you to change. Kasama dun sa gift na binigay ng Diyos sa'yo. It's an all-in package. The power to change. The power to break free from addiction. The power to not live angry all the time. The power to break out of sadness, depression, feeling condemned and inadequate. You can actually have all of your life changed through this all-inclusive package. And it's all free. Minsan may mga raffle, di ba? Sasabi nila, vacation... Top prize, vacation package, Hong Kong, Disneyland. So, ano mga kasama doon? 
airfare, yung basics mo, airfare, hotel, tickets to Hong Kong. Ganun lang. Sabi nila, all-inclusive. Pero yun lang. Hindi nila kinumpute na, we're from La Union. So how much will it cost me to travel to Manila? Kasama doon yung bus fare ko? No, hindi kasama yun. Or kung may dala ka ng sasakyan, yung gasoline, driver, yung toll road, bottled water along the way. May, may mga ibang incidentals. Parking, mahal na ang parking sa airport. Eh. So may mga iba pang gastos along the way. Pagdating doon sa Hong Kong, yung taxi papuntang hotel, yung tip sa hotel bellboy. May mga incidentals. Airport fee, head tax. Ang daming gastos sa pagtatravel, di ba? What if yung all-in na bakasyon included everything? Really everything. Snacks, airport, coffee. What if kasama dun, pati meals pagdating dun, pati yung pocket money pang bilhin ng pasalubong? That's really all-in. Listen, minsan hindi nating inaasahan now, when you receive Christ, there's a lot more than what you expected. Okay, I'm saying God has a gift for you, and it's all in. It's all inclusive. You don't have to pay for everything along the way. You just have to receive. Kumbaga, yung gift that keeps on giving, as long as you keep receiving, God will keep giving. Wag nating i-develop ng mindset na, God, you bless me so much, di hanggang doon na lang. Salamat, Lord. You saved me. You washed away my sins. You gave me a family. You gave me a son. And kanina maga, I was just thanking God sa grace na binigay niya sa akin. I'm still healthy. I have a wife. I have a son. God has made me rich. I was just thanking God. And then right after, I found myself na automatically I was praying, God, I need your grace in my life. Then I realize, I already have God's grace in my life. And dami nga eh. So sabi ko, Lord, I need your grace in my life. And then the Lord's answer to me was, there's always more. There's always more. Tuloy, tuloy to. Palaki na palaki na palaki. It just is growing in the grace. Growing in the knowledge. When you get more knowledge and you discover there's more the truth that you know will set you free. Sinong gusto makipag gift exchange kay God this Christmas? Yeah? Kasi you give God your worst. Yung white elephant mo. You give God the worst thing that you don't need, you don't want, you don't need it in your life. Wag mong dalhin ang mga baggage, ang mga basura na spiritual, emotional, mental baggage. Wag mong dalhin yan sa 2015. Kung anong meron sa buhay mo, iiwanan mo sa 2014. And let's don't take it to the next year, yeah? You gift exchange it with God. He'll take your worst. And He brings it to the cross. And He nails it there forever and dumps all of your garbage in hell. And He gives you the gift exchange that you always wanted, that you always needed. So I have seven gift exchange that God will give to you this Christmas. Number one is you give God your sin and He gives you forgiveness. Yeah. Well, kasalanan. Sinong gusto you want to maintain and retain and keep your sin on you? You want to keep that garbage? You want to keep that dirt? You want to keep that shame on you? The guilt? No. Hindi mo bagay ang kasalanan. It's not, it's not something to be proud of, di ba? Of course, we all have been falling in sin, but you don't want that in your life. You don't want to keep that. Recycle that. Eat that. You don't want ng mga kasalanan to become a part of your character, your personality. Hindi mo kailangan ng kasalanan sa marriage mo, sa business mo, sa emotions. Get it out. Hayan mo ang Diyos, akuin niya. He will, he will transfer your sin onto Himself if you let Him. The truth is, He's done it already. You gotta just walk in the truth of that and believe it. So, let it go. And He gives you forgiveness. Total forgiveness past present and future the truth is your sins have been paid for without your permission jesus did not ask you is it okay if i pay for your debts no he just paid it maybe you don't know that but if you know that when you know that kikinabang ka it'll take that it'll take that sin and guilt conscious off of you it says in ephesians 1 verse 7 
Christ sacrificed his life to set us free from sin, set us free, which means our sins might someday be forgiven if you beg. Is that what it says? It means our sins will be forgiven if you do a lot of good deeds and go to church a lot and pray a lot. What does it say? Our sins will future tense be forgiven if you're really sorry for it. No. He set us free. And that means our sins are now forgiven. Woo! <laughs> That's good. That's a good gift, huh? That our sins are now forgiven. Number two, you let God take your white elephant of rejection and he'll give you unconditional acceptance. May kausap ba ako dito? Sino sa atin, we all deal with this, the fear of rejection. We all have been in that situation before, maybe at work. Maybe you were turned down for a job. They rejected you, unqualified. Ouch. Or maybe your paper small was rejected, incomplete, you know, wrong answer. Maybe you had been rejected courting a girl. Ouch. Apahiapa. Maybe you were rejected by your own family member, a father, a mother. Lahat tayo may mga wounds of rejection. Minsan, baby pa lang, nararanasan natin ng rejection. Kahit hindi pa tayo aware, pero lumabas na, sana lalaki. Bakit kasi babae na naman? And then you just don't realize it. Na yung rejection na yan, it creeps into your soul. Or maybe they called you an accident. Ouch. Or maybe your whole life, kinumper ka sa mga kapatid mo. Mas maputi siya, mas magaling, mas matalino. Bakit ganyan ka? Ito, may pag-asa, papagralan natin siya. Itong isa, hindi. Hindi na kailang walang pag-asa yan. You know, that rejection can really stay with you for a lifetime. Pag laki na, hindi mo akalain, pero dala-dala mo pa rin yung feeling and fear of rejection. Maybe you were abandoned and rejected by your spouse or even your children wounded you, rejected you, called you a bad parent. Ouch! We all have felt and experienced rejection in our life. This Christmas, would you try something with me? Give to God your rejection and take home His acceptance of you. His unconditional accepting you. Do you know, at the cross, Jesus took your rejection. You know, He was rejected. Jesus was a perfect person and they rejected Him for your sake. Para makinabang ka. It says in Isaiah 53.3 that He was despised and rejected. In Ephesians 1 verse 6 is He has made us now accepted in the Beloved. Do you get that? Because naranasan niya ang rejection. Hindi rejection niya. He was experiencing your rejection. Inako niya in advance. All of the despise, all of the name calling, all of the shame and rejection, inako niya so that he could spiritually and eternally take it away from you. He bore it. He took it so that you can be going home not fearing rejection but celebrating unconditional acceptance. Do you understand that God made you acceptable? Yeah, there's things that you don't like. There's things other people don't like about you. But God likes you. He gives you the, thumb, the two thumbs ups. He accepts you as is where is. And even whoever rejects you, you always have the gift of his unconditional acceptance because of Jesus' gift exchange with you. Nintendian yo. Dahil sa gift exchange. Your rejectableness was changed with his acceptableness. Number three is the sickness. And maybe you can write also weakness. Sino sa inyo minsan, you just feel sickly. You know, you have to miss work. You cannot do what you want to do. You have to buy a lot of medicines. Or maybe hindi physical sickness. Sino sa atin minsan, masasabi mo, honestly, nararanasan ko ng emotional sickness. 
My heart is just broken. My emotions are hindi na fa function. I don't have peace of mind. I don't have joy. I feel wounded. I feel a victim. Or minsan, we even feel mental illness. We don't like to admit it, but some of us, sometimes you feel mentally sick. You have thoughts of suicide. You feel depressed, so stressed out. You just don't think straight. Tulala. That sickness or, or the weakness. You know, maybe your weakness is uh, drugs or alcohol, pornography, or you're weak in some other area of addiction. You feel weak mentally. You feel weak talking to other strangers, to other people. Never break down. Mashadong shy. Mashadong insecure. Mashadong jealous. There's weakness and sickness, not just physical, but in all areas of our life. Well, guess what? Jesus took your sickness so that you could go home with health and with healing that's always available. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, again, He took our infirmities. That means our sicknesses. And He carried our sorrows. That means whatever pains you, inside or outside. He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Ano la tayo nag disobey? This rebellion against God, disobey. Alam mo yung tama, pinili mo yung mali. And all of that, but he took it. And it says the punishment, na dapat na pasa atin, but the punishment that brought us shalom, the peace, it was put on him. Not us, him. And by his wounds, we are healed. So this Christmas, give God your sickness, your weakness, and you can take home divine health and healing. Whatever you need, you say, God, I, I just feel mentally sick. Would you heal me? Done. God, I, I, got, physical I got physical problems. Backache, headache, infection, colds, recurring flu. You say, Lord, I'm just, I'm just going to depend on your healing that's available. And every day you declare, by Jesus' wounds, I am healed. I am whole. I have a sound mind. I have a good future. I'm not addicted. I'm free. See, you can do that. And number four is the curse. You exchange yung curse and sumpa. Na, na, you were, we were all born with curse. Sa totoo lang. You know, pinanganak pa tayo. Andyan na yung curse. Yung curse sa earth, curse sa economy, curse ng government, curse ng, you know, there's a lot of curses around it. Eh. Bansa natin, may pagka-curse din. Your money, financially. Do you ever feel like yung, yung pera mo may sumpa? Minsan ang feeling ko yan, you feel that yung pera ko parang may ketong. O kaya may magic, yung magic money, it does a disappearing act. Parang hindi mo akalain na now you see me, now you don't. Pag payday, ang jajan siya. Before the month is finished, miracle disappearance. Wala na, hindi mo matatrace kung saan napunta. Sino sa inyo na, nakaka-relate? Now sometimes, you know, the, the, our finances feel like they're under a curse. Relationships feel like it's always a conflict, always a fight. Just curse, curse, curse. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 28 said that this was the law, batas ng Panginoon noon, that if you obey all of the laws of God, you will be blessed. <laughs> Chumpalang, that's not good news, huh? Because I don't think I can do it. And the kapalit don is, but if you don't obey every one of all the laws of God, you'll be cursed. Ouch. Parang tama ako dun eh. But the good news is, Jesus took your curse so that you could walk away with blessing. The opposite of curse is ulan ng pagpapala. Galatians 3 verse 13 says, Christ has rescued us from the curse. When He was hung on the cross, 
he took upon himself the curse, our curse, for our wrongdoings. Number five, you give to God your poverty and he'll take his prosperity and give it to you. And yung poverty, sino sa atin ay hindi nag-iisip about poverty. That's why we work so hard. That's why people spend their whole life umiikot ang buhay nila around trying to get out of poverty. Hard work. That's why people are obsessed with education. I got to have a, a good grades, good job, good, de- good degree, so I have a good job. People spend everything they have just to get ahead, to get a job abroad, or to get connections, or to have money, looking for, you know, hanap buhay. Why? Because of fear of becoming poor. Fear of living a life of lack, limitation, and poverty. Listen, God does not want you to live that way. And having more money is not the answer. Having more money is just part of the benefit, but it's not a part of the solution. There's only one solution. Give to God your fear of poverty. Trust Him, and He will give you Prosperity. Prosperity with your financial management. Prosperity in your job. Prosperity sa physical na lakas para makakapagtrabaho. Mental prosperity so you're creative. You're a solution maker, a problem solver, an asset at your work. Profitable in your business. Let God give you His gift of Freedom from fear of poverty. Oh, it got quiet in here today, no? Piglang to mahimik. Parang nakaka relate yata tayo dito. Listen, don't be afraid of poverty. Trust God because He loves you enough to give exchange with you. He'll take that poverty, He'll take that fear of lack. God's a provider. He's a giver, not a taker. He doesn't have an agenda to make you poor, to make you hungry, to make you empty. God's agenda is to make you rich and thus fulfill His covenant. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says, For your sake. Kaninong makikinabang dito? Ako. Para sa nakpakinabang mo, he became poor so that by his power, he could make you rich. Yun ang agenda ng Lord. He became, he took the poverty. He was stripped of everything. And his gift for you is, he will provide all of your needs according to his riches. He gives you the power to gain wealth. To be a fruitful tree. To produce fruit if you abide in Him. Listen. John 10.10, Jesus said, The thief comes to kill and steal and destroy. But I came that they might have life abundant. And number six, you can give to the Lord your old sinful self. Yung pamumuhay mo na full of sin, Wrong habits, you know, those, that, that lifestyle that makes you want to sin, makes you want to do wrong. You just don't want to be caught. I am a map booking, but you like to do what you, you know, that old style. Suko muna. Take it off. Hindi mo kailang, hindi na bagay sa yo. Sabi ko kanina, hindi na makakatulong sa happiness mo ang kasalanan. It will not help your marriage. It will not help you become happier. So you can release to God. Give God the elephant, the white elephant of your old sinful life, and He'll give you the gift exchange of a new godly life. One that you'll be happy with. 
you'll be proud to wear. It's not because you changed and biglang naging mabait, biglang ka naging mabanal. No, it's that God put His holiness on you. Like you're wearing somebody else's clothes. Have you ever tried to wear somebody else's clothes na hindi mo damit? And mas maganda yung damit nila kaysa lahat ng damit mo? Have you ever tried to, you know, you know what if he get the oil, hindi lang kapatid, no? What if mayroong mayaman na exactly yung size mo and nagbigay sa'yo ng mga designer? Yung mga, you know, Armani, you know, pati sapatos, you know, lahat ng mga Versace, kung ano yung mga tatak na gusto mo. And you're wearing that. How would you look? You would look great. Pero in your heart, you know, you did not buy those clothes. Right? Pero caring, carry more. <laughs> That's how it is. You know, when you come to Christ, He takes all of your old, dirt, dirty, you know, mancha, butas, butas, na damit, yung baho, may ma markings, may mancha pa ng kilikili and everything. He takes all of that and He takes it away and He, he gives you new clothes from brief, from brief to hat. Everything, complete. It says in Colossians 3, verse 9 and 10, it says, you have put off the old self with its habits and, and you've put on the new self. And here's what's good. The new, it's not a one-time thing, but this new self, is which, this new being, which God is constantly renewing in His own image. So, tuloy-tuloy, Recurring is laging nagbabago. Imagine yung damit ng, kahit na mayroong nagbigay sa'yo ng bagong damit, nagiging old. Every time you wash it, every time you wear it, every time you fall in the dirt, or what, it gets a little older. Nag-fade, parang kulay, nagagasgas na yung sinturon. But with this new clothes that God gives you, it keeps getting renewed. Every time you wear it, panibago. A bright, shiny one. The shoes never have scratches. It just keeps getting better. Means to say, as you walk with Christ, you start to look like Him more and more. You start to have His mind and His heart and His thoughts. So, number seven is this, that you give to God your death, He gives you His life. Eternal life. Nabanggit ko kanina, it's not just quantity, it's quality. The wages of sin, oh nga, Romans 6.23, ang kabayaran ng, Diyos, uh, ng sin, ng kasalanan, ay kamatayan. Pero ang, buha, ang uh, regalo ng Diyos na walang bayad, buhay na walang hanggang. Sinong gusto makipag-gift exchange kay God this year? You know, just give Him all of your white elephants, yung mga garbage, yung mga, and, and start accepting, start receiving at least these seven. Piliin mo dyan. Mamaya-maya, siguro, when you're at home or mamaya, pag may time ka after lunch, scan mo yung handouts na yan. One by one, is scan yung, check mo yung seven na benefits na yan. Yung seven na gift exchanges. And you pick one that you need most right now. You say, which of these do I really need the most in my life right now? Sa totoo lang, you have all of them. The more you receive, the more the gift just keeps giving. But it starts with Jesus. He is the gift. It's not what He can do for you. It's just Him. When you get Him, all of what He has done na for you is available to you. Sino sa inyo na na tanggapin si Jesus today? Look at me. Kung hindi pa nakatang, okay, if you have not yet received Jesus, look at me, listen. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. I'm serious about this. Why should you go week after week, month after month, na hindi pa nakatanggap kay Jesus personally? That's, that's crazy. Don't do that. Simply lang. He already received you. Now you respond and receive Him. He already bought a gift for you. He's excited to give it to you. Why not just give him all of your gift? It's not really a gift. You know, there's nothing we can give him that he needs. But what it means is, you trash, you 
yung, yung old life, the sin, the guilt, the shame, the, the sickness, the fear, the poverty. Let him take it. Give him your white elephant that you're trying to get rid of. Don't try to get rid of it in other ways. Let him take it. Just believe he took it now at the cross. And start receiving. Receiving. Dare to, dare to open your heart and just receive. Oh, you said I'll be forgiven. I believe it. I receive it. You said I'll be healed. I don't know how, but I receive it. I believe it. You said I don't have to fear poverty. You'll prosper me in every way. Well, I trust you for that. I'm rich. I'm rich. Can you say that to someone? Tell your neighbor, I'm rich. You know, you know I, I don't have to be in bondage. I don't have to be a slave. I don't have to be addicted. Tell your neighbor, I'm free. You know? See that? I have life. It's abundant life. I have hope and a future. All right. Nice. Nice kong ilid. I want to lead you in a prayer right now. And everyone that can hear my voice, even down at the overflow hall, the nursery, anyone who's hearing this right now, would you just close your eyes for a moment? God is good to you. And His plan for you, his, his agenda for you is not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. He just, he just loves you. You don't have to do anything to earn His love. He just loves you because that's who He is. He just wants to bless you because of what Jesus Paid for. Ayaw niya masayang yung cross. Yung bayad ni Jesus sa cross. Ayaw niya masayang yan. Ang nais nice ng Diyos is susulitin mo. May enjoy mo. Mapapa sa'yo. Ang benefit after benefit. Grace after grace. That Christ be born inside of you. And if you have not yet made that decision or you're not yet sure. Hindi ka pa sigurado na nakatanggap kay Jesus. And, and you just want to be sure of it. Ilagay mo ang kamay mo sa, sa tiyan mo. Imagine, male or female, imagine like Mary, you're just saying, Christ, and the, say that prayer. Say, Christ, be born in me. Pinapasok na kita. You're welcome here. Grow in my life. And be delivered through me to the world. I receive you as my Savior. And I want you in my life. Empower me. Ngayong Christmas, ngayong araw na ito, na kikipag-gip exchange ako sa'yo. At tinatanggap ang iyong mga biyaya. And thank you for taking my garbage, my sin, my shame and guilt, sickness, poverty, rejection. I receive your gifts. Amen and amen. You know, you changed gifts with God this year. You're going to be a champion. You're going to be a champion. You overcome. We hope you enjoy listening to today's teachings from Tim Warden. For more life-changing audio and video teaching resources, call the San Fernando Christian Community at 0919-846-6849 or visit our website at christian.com.ph and add us on facebook.com slash sfccphilippines. If you're ever in La Union, visit us along Ortiga Highway, Santiago Norte, San Fernando City.